All right. So for our notes today, we are going to learn our third way of being able to solve a quadratic. And personally, I think this one is my favorite way. We're using what we refer to as completing the square. Completing the square works if your a value is a 1. If your a value is not a 1, there's an extra step you would have to do to make it happen. But a lot of times what that does, it creates fractions. So if you're not very great with fractions, then it doesn't really work. But completing the square is a shortcut to using the quadratic equation. As we remember, we did that last class. It kind of took a while, had a, quite a few steps to it. Completing the square, as I said, is just a little shortcut to it. So again, when we're doing completing the square, the equation must be in standard form. So our ax squared plus bx plus c equals a 0. Since we're solving, it's got to be equal to 0. Ange. So here we have the steps listed out for you. As we go through it, though, the steps are going to become very, very fast. And you guys will be able to pick it up, especially after what we were just working on. So first thing we have to do is you have to move your c term over to the other side of the equation. So if we look at my example here, my c is my 5. So I have to add that over. So we got x squared minus 2x equals 5. So we move that c term over so you have just your x on one side. You got your number on the other side. So then what we're going to do is you're going to add in a space to both sides of your equal sign. Because what we're going to do is we're going to add a number in there. And what you add to one side, you have to add to the other side. We've got to keep it equal. So now this gets into what we were just doing with our little practice exercise there. What number would I put here to make this a perfect square trinomial? Not 4. Remember, we take half of this. 1. So this would become a 1. And we would have to put a 1 in on the other side. you got to put them in on both sides. No, because when you square a negative, it turns positive. It's always a plus at the end. So then, how would this factor? X what? 1 squared, and then it equals 6. So then, since our goal is to solve for x, that's our whole reason for doing this, this tells us now you take the square root of both sides. So I'm going to have the square root of x minus 1 squared equals the square root of 6. Which, as we know, though, this squared and the square root do what? Cancel each other out. So I have x minus 1 equals... And then we've got to remember to put that plus or minus in front of our radical 6. Because when you take the square root of number, you really have two answers. You can either have the positive version of that answer, or you can have the negative version of that answer. Not yet. Hold on. So as a side note, like for 4, it could either be a positive 2, or it could be a negative 2. Because negative 2 squared is also 4, and then positive 2 squared gives you a 4. So then our last step, we just got to add the 1 over. So it's 1 plus or minus the square root of 6. That's your final answer. So that's your quadratic formula in the lowest terms. It simplified our radical for us, <coughs> and it reduced everything. OK, so let's try number 1. Remembering we have to have our x's on one side, our number on the other side, what do we need to move? Yep, so we'll move the 24 over, and we'll add the 16 over. We can do it all at once. The other thing I'm going to add into this step right now is I'm also going to put my spaces in there. So I got all my x's on a side with a space, and then I got my number on the other side with a space. So x squared plus 16x plus space equals negative 24 plus space. No. 
close. You got to square your 8 now. Yes. So 64 goes out of line because half of 16 is 8. 8 squared gives us 64, our perfect square trinomial. So how does this left side factor? X plus 8. Because remember, it's 8 times 8 gives us 64. So it's X plus 8 squared equals, which gives us what? That will give us a 40. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So I'm left with x plus 8 over on my left side. Now 40 has a perfect square that goes into it. What is it? 4 times 10. Remembering our plus and minus in front, so plus or minus. Square root of 4, square root of 10. Which the 4 pops out as a 2. And then our very last step. Now add. Subtract. So it's negative 8 plus or minus 2 radical 10. What are our two things we got to move? The x squared and the 8 have to switch sides. When I move them, what am I going to add to each side? A space. So x squared plus 4x plus a space equals 8 plus a space. Yeah, but you need the space there to complete your perfect square trinomial. Huh? It would be 4, because half of 4 is 2. 2 squared gives us 4. So how would the x squared plus 4x plus 4 factor? Not 4. x plus 2 squared equals 12. All right. What do we do with this step? Uh, we put the square root. The, the square root. The square root thing. And then just x plus two equals twelve. Plus or minus, and let's simplify our square root of twelve, because our directions did say simplest radical form. So what's our perfect square that goes into twelve? Four, four. four times three. three. So the square root of 4 is 2. The plus or minus is in front of it, yep. And then our very last step. Subtract the 2 over. Subtract the 2 over. So we get x equals negative 2 plus or minus 2 square root of 3. Yay! All right, let's take a look at number 3. So we have if x squared plus 2 minus 6x equals 0 is solved by completing the square, an intermediate step would be. Now this is the kind of question they love to ask. So basically what this wants you to do is they want you to start doing your completing the square, but you're not going to completely finish it. You're just going to find the step in the middle as you're working on it. So I'm going to write this down over here. Okay, so what do I have to move? The 2. So we have x squared minus 6x and then plus a what? Plus a space equals my negative 2 plus a space. Yep, minus. It would be a 9. Good. So our left side, how would that factor? Uh, three. Yep. X minus 3 squared equals 
7. Negative 2 plus 9 is 7. Is that one of our choices? Yes. Yes. Which one? B. 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 Got to be careful. Look for that negative sign. That's how they're going to trick you. Yeah. That's how they're going to get you every time. No, you're not. I've never had a kid fail who's actually done what I told them to do. Never. So we do have one other thing we do with our completing the square, and it's not just purely to solve for your x. Sometimes what we have to do is we have to put it into vertex form by completing the square, which we have talked about vertex form before. If you forgot, it's right down here at the bottom for you. Your a times x minus h squared plus your k. That's our vertex form. They give you some. Not all. You have to memorize some of them. Yeah, I give you a copy of the reference sheet before the exam so you can see what you need. And then I give you a copy of you need to study these so you have like a brain dump. I give you. Don't worry. So again, we need to make sure we are in standard form. So our y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. There's a y this time because we're not solving for x. We're taking an equation already that's been graphed or can be graphed, and we're rearranging it into vertex form. So that's why we have a y as opposed to a 0. It all starts off exactly the same. You move your c term over to the other side of the equal sign. You then add your two spaces, one on each side of the equal sign. Yeah. We then finish off our perfect square trinomial like we were doing before, taking half of it and then squaring it. And then we factor. So let's take a look. So number one, we are already in standard form. We have our x squared minus 2x minus 5 equals y. So we need to move the 5 over with the y. So that gives me x squared minus 2x plus my space equals y plus 5 plus a space. Four. Not four. One. one. Yep, you tried. So how would our left side factor? X minus one squared. And that equals y plus 6. 5 plus 1 gives us plus 6. So now, because we're just putting in vertex form, we're not solving, all we do is we subtract the 6 back over. I have x minus 1 squared minus 6 equals y. That is our vertex form. Yep. So there's fewer steps when we're doing vertex form. So now what we also have to do is state what is our vertex. So remember, the x value from your vertex is inside the parentheses, but you got to change the sign when you pull it out so it becomes a positive 1. one. And then the negative 6 stays as negative 6. So that would be our vertex. 1, negative 6. <coughs> All right, let's take a look at number 2. We have two things to move first in number 2. Matt? The Not the 5x. The negative 15. So I get x squared plus 5x plus a space equals y plus 15 plus a space. So we moved our x squared over because we can't do this with a negative x squared. Okay, and then what's 2.5 squared? Twenty-five over four, because what you would have is five over two, and then you square both those numbers. Is how I got my twenty-five over four. I don't know. Okay, 
so when we go to factor this, if you want to use the decimal, you can. So you could put up your 6.25 instead. Both are perfectly fine. So this would be the 2.5 that we took to square to get my 6.25. So then 15 plus 6.25 is 21.25. So again, we're trying to get it into vertex form. So we just got to subtract our 21.25 back over. So we get x plus 2.5 squared minus 21.25 equals our y. There's our vertex form. Yep, now we got to state the coordinates of our vertex. Ooh, really close. Negative 2.5 and negative 21.25. If you really wanted to, sure. Okay. So down here for number three, what's different about number three that we didn't have for all the other ones? We got a negative x squared in there. So if you have a negative x squared, what you have to do is you have to divide everything by negative 1. This isn't like number 2 where I could just add my x squared over to the other side and be perfectly fine because there's really nothing else to move. So this gives me negative y equals x squared minus 10x plus 15. Even the y gets divided by that negative 1. So everything changes signs. Now we're going to follow our same completing the square steps as we were doing before. So I'm going to subtract my 15 over. So negative y minus 15 equals x squared minus 10x. Oops, I forgot to put my space in there. It's okay. I can fit it in. <coughs> So negative y minus 15 plus a space, my space is out in front, equals x squared minus 10x plus a space. Yep, so half of 10 is 5. 5 squared gives us 25. So I'd get a negative y plus 10 because my 25 minus 15 gives me my positive 10. Equals, how would we factor that? Mm-hmm. But plus or minus? Minus five. This one was minus, so that's minus. So we're subtracting our ten over. So we have x minus five squared minus ten. And then we got just one step left. Divide everything by negative one again. So now we have a positive y equals, my negative 1 goes in front of the parentheses. It doesn't touch anything inside the parentheses because that stuff in there is squared, so it's all special. Negative 1 just goes in front of it. And then the 10 becomes positive. So then our vertex would be what point? 5, 10. There's our vertex form. There's our vertex. Okay. 